this panel discussion. And Professor O'Neill, I'd ask him to introduce the panelists at that point. And then finally, I'll hand over to Fiona Jennings from the ISPCC, who will manage the Q&A session at the end. Um, I just want to point out to uh, webinar attendees that we've disabled the hands up function. Um, so for questions at the end, these can be submitted using the Zoom Q&A that you'll find on the screen. Mm -hmm. And um, if you can just ask everybody to make sure that their microphone is turned off until they are speaking. And I think if we're ready to go, I'll uh, now hand over to Minister McEntee to address the webinar, Minister. Thank you, Niall. I'm just going to start by checking that everyone can hear me, if, if that's OK. Yeah, we're good to yes. go, Grace. Uh, well, look, good afternoon, everyone. Um, really pleased to be joining you this afternoon, um, firstly, to mark Safer Internet Day. And I'm so pleased that so many of you could join us online and, and you're, you're tuning in live to watch this. But also um, today's a very special day as we mark the enactment and the, the signing into law of Coco's Law. And I just want to start by particularly uh, welcoming and thanking Jackie Fox, uh, Coco or Nicole's mother, for championing this legislation. But not only that, um, championing and, and working to make the Internet a safer place um, for our younger people uh, and Jackie will, will obviously say a few words in the next few moments. I also want to thank and to welcome and to acknowledge my colleague Brendan Howland who introduced uh, Coco's Law and has championed this legislation for many years and Brendan will also speak in a few moments. Um, today we are marking Safer Internet Day. This is the 18th year that we mark uh, Safer Internet Day and we're joining with 170 countries across the world really in um, acknowledging how important the internet is in our lives, but how important it is that it's used in a safe and a responsible way. In particular, uh, when we're talking about our younger people, it's about making sure um, that it is safe for our younger people, but that they themselves know uh, how to be responsible and to use our internet uh, in a safe way. And today we're launching a series of webinars because it's not just about one day, it's about what we do after today uh, and in the year ahead. And so we're launching a series of webinars that will take place, will be hosted um, through my Department of Justice. Um, and really the theme of this year's webinars is Be Kind Online. Uh, and I think it's such a simple yet a powerful message associated with the series of webinars. And it's designed to try and help us understand and to engage with our young people on the importance of behaving respectfully um, with each other and to each other online. Um, it, it, it amazes me, and I suppose this is not just younger people that do this, but uh, many people behave in a way online that they simply wouldn't offline, um, whether it's they think that it's not as hurtful, whether it's not as impactful, or whether it's just easy to say um, mean things online, but it's not a way that they would behave if they were uh, talking to somebody in person. And so we need to make sure that we can get the message across that young people learn from an early age that it's not okay to behave in this way, that any type of harassment, any type of intimidation, any type of bullying online simply won't be tolerated uh, online or offline. Technology, of course, is, is a huge part of our lives. Um, our younger people, I think, from the moment that they can walk and talk, um, they're able to scroll on phones and, and it has become part of our everyday lives. I come from a generation where I couldn't use the internet if my dad was on the phone or if I wanted to talk to my friends, I had to sit on the, the stairs on the phone for hours on end, but things have changed and we all need to be able to move with the times. And while the internet has been a huge positive force in our lives, development of technology has been a huge positive force. There are also negatives to it. So as uh, adults, as lawmakers, as citizens, we need to do everything in our power to make sure that it is a safe and a positive space for all of those who use it. And that's what this is about today, Safer Internet Day. It's about how can we do that? And how can we as a community collectively work together to do that? Um, from a government point of view, I, I do think we've made progress in recent years and really the, the signing into law, of Coco's law today uh, is a sign of that. But as well as that, we have ratified the Lanzarote Convention. And um, this is specifically looking at the protection of children against sexual abuse and sexual exploitation, but it's also about promoting national and international cooperation. We have to remember we can't do this by ourselves. There are no borders when it comes to the Internet. So we need to be working with our colleagues at a European and an international level to try and tackle 
uh, issues of children being exploited and sexual exploitation online. We know there's progress being made by my colleague, Minister Catherine Martin, on the online media regulation safety bill. And later on this year as well, I'll be making proposals to strengthen uh, incitement to hatred and hate crime, which will apply in all forms of communication, but in particular, uh, it will apply where that communication happens in online settings as well. We need to make sure, of course, that our, our, our police force, our, our guard, the Shia Khan, that they have the resources and the tools to be able to deal with these type of issues. Uh, and that's why we're constantly um, reviewing and making sure that our legislation is up to date and it's up to speed. But in saying that, it should always be a last resort where we're trying to, I suppose, criminalise people. Education should always be the first approach. We know that when you are young, if you learn something, if you get into the habit of something, if you are taught something, it stays with you for the rest of your life. If you learn tools or uh, ways and mechanisms of dealing with certain things, it, it tends to live with you for the rest of your life. So by educating young people as to how to behave online, uh, the type of people that we want them to be online, uh, we do so from an early age. And so in that regard, there's a lot of work that has been done to, to date. Uh, and I want to acknowledge the Irish Safer Internet Centre. Um, we have four organisations. While the work that they do um, might be different collectively, I think they share the same ambition, and that is to create a positive space and an inclusive world for our children feel safe and they feel protected. And I just want to thank the four organisations uh, who are online with us today. We have Webwise, uh, we have the ISPCC Childline, uh, the National Parents Council and Hotline. I just want to thank them for the invaluable work that they do, for the resources that they provide, the educational tools that they provide. And just to say we're, we're really delighted to be partnered with them this week as we host a series of webinars that are targeted at our young people, our parents, our teachers, our educators, so many people in this space and who I think will really benefit from it. So I'm, I'm delighted to launch the Be Kind online webinar series and I want to wish everybody well as they take part in that this week. I'm also so pleased um, today that we are officially enacting and in a few moments that I will be signing into law and um, through a statutory instrument, COCO's law. And when I was first, uh, when I was appointed as, as Minister for Justice last summer, uh, one of the first commitments that I made was that this piece of legislation would be enacted as quickly as possible. And I had the, the pleasure of meeting with Jackie Fox um, later on in the year and hearing from Jackie, the wonderful uh, young woman that her daughter Nicole was, and I suppose hearing the, the, the devastating impact and, and the the traumatic experience that she and her family went through, which ultimately led to Nicole's death. And I, and I think we all um, want to make sure that that kind of situation does not arise again, that there is no young person that does not feel, or should not feel safe online to be themselves, to engage with their friends, uh, to, to, to use it in a safe way, free from harassment, free from bullying, free from any type of a situation that would lead them uh, to harm's way. And that's what this bill is about. It's about, for the first time, making it a criminal offence to share intimate images, to harass, to bully, to do that to somebody online with an intent or not to cause harm. Uh, and this will now provide the tools to Angarda Shia Khanna uh, to really, I suppose, enact this uh, and to make sure that not just our younger people, but that all people know that there are consequences to doing that. Um, of course, it's about making sure people know about this legislation as well. And education, as I mentioned before, will be a huge part of that. And I want to thank um, Jackie for working with us because today we're not just enacting COCO's law, but we're also announcing a number of things. Um, we're partnering with the Anti-Bullying Centre in DCU, uh, and we're doing so to establish uh, a research specifically looking at cyberbullying. Um, and the focus on this will be to provide uh, data research. It will be to provide advice, resources relating to cyberbullying, uh, cyber hate, online harassment, but most importantly, the, the enactment of COCO's law. And this will be funded through my own department here in justice. Separately, we'll be providing a specific fund in the popular webwise locker program and this is aimed specifically at making sure that in our secondary schools our young students are aware of uh, coco's law what it means um, and i suppose what the consequences are if they behave in this type of activity online so this is a really important day and again i just want to thank jackie 
thank Brendan and so many who have supported and, and pushed for the enactment of this law. Um, I do think it will make a difference and I do think it will help to make the internet a safer space for our younger people. So I'm going to sign this now and uh, it will officially ensure that this can be enacted and, and can be um, used by members of Angar the Shia Khanna. That's done. So again, I just want to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to launch this year's Safer Internet Day to enact this law. And I'm going to pass you over uh, to Jackie Fox, who is going to say a few words for us. Thank you. Sorry, Jackie, you might still be on mute there. No, sorry. Great. Can you hear me? Um, I just want to say for um, a start that I'm grateful to be here today and to be part of the, the Safety Internet Day. Um, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I have um, a few words that I want to read out. I don't normally read from a sheet, so I'm, I'm a bit nervous doing it from a sheet today. So um, Today is the day I feel I can start to move forward a little in my life after achieving three years of painful campaigning for a law to make victims of online abuse safer. It's also a huge day and a huge legacy for my beautiful daughter, Nicole Fox, a legacy which will be known as Coco's Law in her memorandum and in the, in the Irish statute book. I often wondered if this law had been in years ago would I still have my baby girl with me today? But now you guys have the protection Nicole never had, and now it is your chance to use it. It's time to stop trolls destroying other people's lives in the way that they destroyed ours. But now the guards and the courts must make examples of people to deter other people in thinking they will get away with their cowardly actions. I want to thank Helen, Minister Helen McEntee, Brendan Howland, March for Justice Ireland, Fimber Markey, and many more who assisted in making this day happen. I hope Nicole is proud of me today for never giving up and for making her name, Nicole Coco Fox, live on forever. I will never stop loving her or missing her until the day I die. But until then, I want to continue to make a huge impact on people's lives through education, colleges, schools, etc. Lastly, I would like to read Nicole's memorandum. When you look up, you can look up the harassment harmful communication related bill, or you can type in Coco's Law, and this is what will come up. The content of this bill is strongly influenced by persons who have lost their lives because of harmful uh, because of online harmful communications in particular, Nicole Fox. The bill is in recognition of her mother's determination to honor the memory of her daughter and to strengthen the law so that others can be safer. As a result, this can be referred to as Coco's law. Although I will never see Nicole smile, I will never hear her laugh, I will never feel her hugs or hear her beautiful voice, but both Nicole and the words in her memorandum will live in my heart forever. Thank you. Thanks for that, Jackie. Um, very powerful words, and particularly on a day like today. Um, I'm going to hand over now to Deputy Brendan Howland, who has a few words. Thanks. Thanks very much indeed. And I am truly delighted to join with Minister McEntee, uh, with you, Jackie, and all the listeners. Uh, on a very important, fateful day to bring a beginning to a new law, Coco's Law, uh, to honour the memory of beautiful Nicole. And Jackie, I'm sure she's as proud as punch looking down on all of us today, uh, on her very determined, uh, very resilient, never say no um, mother who was determined that 
there would be a lasting memorial that would impact on everybody uh, in memory of her beautiful daughter. It's been um, more than three years, the journey of getting this particular law enacted. I want to thank all the, the people involved over those three years, uh, particularly the campaigners, those who have suffered, the families that have suffered harassment, bullying, intimidation, or who have had their most private pictures, images of themselves shared without their permission. From today, from the moment that Minister McEntee signed the commencement order, uh, that now is a criminal offence. We have a robust law to protect all of us, all our people, uh, from the terrible damage that we've seen that was done to so many people. And often as the instances that were brought to my attention every time I spoke about this over the last three years, often in private, um, that people didn't talk about and the suffering that people endured and are continuing to endure. Our online public space um, should be as protected as any public space. You should be as free to go online as you would walk down a public street or go into a public park without fear of harassment, intimidation or bullying. And we need to have a legal framework to achieve all of that. That legal framework is now in place. Uh, but the next step, because today, as the Minister has rightly said, is but a beginning. We as legislators put in a legal framework that in many ways sets the parameters of activity, but we need to tell people about that. And we need to bring about cultural change so that the, the type of people described by Minister McEntee, who seem to be somehow immune to the impact that they have on others because they're in their own home or online somewhere, that it's not as harmful or as hurtful or as damaging as striking a blow. And often, as we know from a painful experience, it, it, it in many instances is much more painful. So I look forward to the cultural changes through education that this will bring about. I'm delighted uh, to hear of the initiatives uh, that the minister is uh, operating in tandem today to alert people not only to the law but obviously to change people's behavior into the future so that everybody can be safe. I also look forward to the establishment, uh, obviously not a justice matter, of a digital safety commissioner and that too will be another step in transforming the landscape for all of us to have safe communications online. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Deputy Howland, and uh, thanks again to Minister McEntee and to Jackie for their for their words. Um, I'm going to hand over now to Professor Brian O'Neill. Said so Professor O'Neill is a member of Ireland's uh, National Advisory Council for Online Safety, and uh, Professor O'Neill is going to lead uh, this afternoon's panel discussion. So, uh, Professor O'Neill, if you'd like to introduce the the, the panelists, please. Thanks indeed, Niall. Thank you very much. And uh, of course, uh, thank you also to uh, Minister McEntee, Deputy Howland, and of course, Jackie Fox, uh, for such a, a powerful way to mark uh, this year's uh, Safer Internet Day. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, uh, to uh, follow this uh, with uh, uh, members of uh, Ireland's Safer Internet Centre. And uh, we're marking Safer Internet uh, uh, Day today uh, with a panel discussion focusing and putting a spotlight on the work of the Irish Safer Internet center and uh, to look at the work that it does and how it uh, contributes and indeed now greatly strengthened by uh, new legislation in this area uh, uh, to create a safer and a better uh, uh, online experience for children young people everywhere um, safer internet centers are national hubs co-financed by the european union under the connecting europe facility and offer three kinds of services uh, a national awareness center a helpline and a hotline uh, there are, in fact, uh, 31 sa uh, safer internet centres right across Europe, uh, all U EU member states in the United Kingdom, Norway and Iceland. And they all work together uh, within one umbrella and work together very much as a network. Uh, the Irish Safer Internet Centre is a partnership of four leading organisations uh, working together under the coordination of the Department of Justice with one mission uh, to make the internet a better, safer place uh, for children and young people when they go online. 
I'm delighted to be joined by representatives of the four uh, partner organizations. And without further ado, uh, let me introduce and uh, colleagues, you can switch on your uh, cameras. Uh, so uh, Jane McGarrigal uh, is project officer at uh, webwise.ie. Uh, and Webwise is the Irish Internet Safety Awareness Centre, part of the Professional Development Service for Teachers, a Department of Education and Skills funded support service. Uh, Anna Nicolescu is Chief Executive at Honline.ie, Ireland's National Reporting Centre, where members of the public can securely, anonymously and confidentially report suspected illegal content online. Uh, John Church uh, is Chief Executive of ISBC's, ISBCC Childline, and Childline provides a 24-7 active listening service across phone, text and online uh, for any child or young person concerned about something they've encountered online or other issues. And finally, Anya Lynch, uh, CEO of the National Parents Council Primary, which operates the Parent and Adult Helpline dedicated to dealing with issues relating to online safety. You're all very welcome. Thanks very much uh, for taking the time uh, to uh, uh, join the panel discussion this afternoon. So Jane, if I could turn to you, uh, first of all, um, tell us a little bit about why you think it's important for the Irish Safe Internet Centre to collaborate with European partners. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Minister, Deputy and everyone. And thanks, Brian. Yeah, so collaboration is central to the, the work of the Safer Internet Centre. As you mentioned, the Irish Safer Internet Centre is one of 31 Safer Internet Centres which come under the coordination of the InSafe and InHope networks. The InSafe network promotes safe, responsible, creative, ethical use of online information and communication technologies, including the internet, while supporting children and young people, as well as their parents, teachers and caretakers. Through the InSafe network, we share knowledge, best practice, create synergies between the awareness and helplines. We promote the work of the hotlines. We also promote a safer and better internet through common awareness raising resources, campaigns and events. For example, today, Safer Internet Day is one of our key initiatives or the Safer Internet Forum, an annual European conference on online safety. And all of this great work is shared through the European hub for online safety, the Better Internet for Kids platform. This network also provides opportunities for youth participation and engagement, which is so important through initiatives such as the Better Internet for Kids Youth Panel, which this year was represented by four members of the Irish Youth Advisory Panel. We meet regularly online and offline prior to the pandemic to share updates, information, resources, meet with and hear from industry and policy makers. A great example of the benefits of the network can be seen in the pandemic this year, actually. We've met regularly to share experiences from, to hear experiences from other countries from across Europe in the pandemic, hear about the challenges we've all faced, hear about and share new resources we've de developed to respond to the, the, the pandemic and responses, and all of which has been shared through the BIC platform as well. For a safer internet centre on a national level, this adds incredible value to all our work. If I may, Brian, uh, yeah, I'd just Anna. like to, to join in to say a few words about the in-hope side of the network for those who may not be aware. So um, if you think of hotline.ie, there are over 46 such hotlines worldwide. And InHope is the membership organization uniting these hotlines and facilitating the secure exchange of reports between different jurisdictions so that we can uh, have child sexual abuse material uh, removed at source, irrespective of where in the world it may be hosted. Uh, similarly to InSafe, the InHope network provides a forum for collaboration on the development of best practices among all hotlines and expert training meetings. Uh, we also have regular uh, joint InSafe InHope meetings, which facilitate enhanced cooperation and a transfer of knowledge between um, associated cross-border services such as awareness center, helplines, hotlines, and other stakeholders working in this space, including policymakers, industry, and law enforcement, to name a few. Very good. Okay, thanks. And uh, Jane, just about uh, the resources that uh, Webwise um, uh, produces and uh, uh, provides. Can you tell me about those and how are they how are they developed? 
Absolutely. This is kind of one of our core areas of work. So we develop and disseminate free resources that help teachers integrate internet safety and digital citizenship into teaching and learning in their schools. These resources are research informed, curriculum aligned, and they're designed to promote positive engagement with di digital technology and to empower children and young people to become safe, responsible digital citizens. All our resources are developed with the support of experts, including partners in the Safer Internet Centre, and they're reviewed and approved by the Department of Education. We also consult with NCSE on the development of our resources as well. If I may, I'd like to take as an example um, our lockers programme, which I know was mentioned earlier, and given the significance of the announcement today, this programme was addressed to develop the non-consensual sharing of intimate images. It's a junior cycle, SBHE or SE program and contains information for school leaders on dealing with sexting incidents. Involved in the development of the program were law enforcement, legal experts, the Law Reform Commission, SBHE and child welfare experts. And within the program itself are six lessons addressing some really important topics that arise from sexting incidents, including the legal, the legal background, victim blaming, consent, media influence and gender stereotyping. This programme also includes clear paths for support and help seeking and is supported by some excellent video materials. Um, it's currently being updated to reflect the new legislation and all these materials can be accessed for free via our website. We also send out free hard copies to schools as well. Very good. Okay, and obviously very, very relevant uh, in light of uh, today's uh, announcement. Um, Oni, if I could turn to you, uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, the services offered by the National Parents Council Primary and how can parents, guardians or caregivers uh, engage with uh, the, the National Council, uh, Parents Council? Yes, yeah, so we, we offer a wide variety of services, but in the context of Internet Safety Day, I'll concentrate on the ones that are, that are specific to keeping children safe online. So we would we would offer supports for parents in terms of how they support their children in, in keeping them online. So first of all, we have a helpline um, that can be accessible uh, via telephone or email. And parents can, can ring that helpline with really any concerns that they have um, in terms of their children being safe online. So it could be that something has happened and they want advice around how to deal with it, or it could be that they're thinking of getting their child a device and, and looking as to how they can set that up safely with their child. So that, that's the helpline service, but we also have a, a number of training um, services as well. So the, these would be education programs for parents. Um, Pre-COVID, if we can remember back to a time like that, we used to go into schools and we would uh, work with parents around different messaging around keeping their children safe online. But obviously now we, we're not going into schools, but we're providing those services um, actually online as well. So um, the, the, the parents have got much more engaged in platforms like this in terms of Zoom and getting the information that, that they require that. And it's working very, very well. So we run our, our programmes that we would normally have run in school online through Zoom. And this week, in, in line with Internet Safety Week, we're offering those to parents. Um, they're all free of charge. You can find out how to book them on our website. I think we've got over 1,600 parents booked in this week already, but there are more spaces. So if parents want to do those, those training programs, they, they can find that out. So all our contact details, whether it's a helpline or whether it's training, they can find that out on our website, mpc.ie. Very good. Uh, thanks, Sonia. And uh, uh, hopefully after today, there'll be even more demand. I should uh, just uh, uh, again echo uh, for everybody watching and joining in this afternoon. Please feel free to post uh, questions into the Q&A. Uh, we will try, time permitting, to try and get to some questions at the end. Uh, but uh, uh, just uh, uh, now, if I could uh, you know, turn to Anna again. Uh, Anna, could you tell us a little bit about, uh, explain more about uh, the work of Hotline.ie and uh, the driving force behind it? Sure, Brian. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, amongst other things, we provide Ireland's primary national channel for members of the public to report uh, securely, anonymously and confidentially uh, potential illegal content online. Um, we work at the intersection between civil society, uh, industry and law enforcement to have child sexual abuse material uh, and sexually exploitative content such as child grooming uh, swiftly removed uh, from the internet. 
Uh, so our work reduces the availability and spread of this illegal content online, uh, disrupts the cycle of child sexual exploitation and prevents uh, repeat victimization of children who suffered from abuse. We work collaboratively with over 46 other hotlines worldwide and our members participating uh, companies from the online industry and law enforcement to ensure the children in the imagery may be identified and safeguarded. Um, we have highly skilled and internationally cer certified analysts who assess every report that we receive against rigorous standards and by reference to Irish law. As people are at the heart of everything that we do, Safer Internet Day is also about celebrating the frontline responders. So I would like to take a moment to also acknowledge my compassionate and resilient team. Without them, the work of hotline.ie would not be possible. Um, it takes a special person uh, to be able to do one of the hardest jobs imaginable. Um, whilst our analysts are trained and experienced, they are being uh, exposed to distressing content uh, every day, uh, more so than um, any of us would be in a lifetime. So their well-being and mental health is of paramount importance to us. And we look after them, for example, by providing mandatory vicarious stress counseling sessions uh, to support and equip uh, them in the face of the challenging work they carry out. So uh, I'm sure we all know there's so much out there to do and we can always be doing so much more, but it is seeing the results, you know, seeing this website that has been taken down, knowing that we are making a tangible difference in the lives of countless children within Ireland and abroad, that's what actually motivates us and that's what keeps us going. Very good. Uh, and uh, John, uh, in relation to ISPCC uh, Childline, uh, obviously you also uh, you know, field a very strong team of frontline uh, responders. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that and what it takes to be a frontline responder you know, for ISPCC Childline? Sure. Well, Brian, I think firstly, they must be a good listener. Um, and that means parking their own concerns and issues when they go into uh, their own shift on one of our six units across the country. And, you know, it's a it's a very brave decision for a child to reach out and ring Childline or get in touch with to our online services. And, and children demonstrate that bravery over 800 times every single day. So we must ensure that our volunteers provide a safe place for them. Uh, currently, we've over 220 volunteers on the front line from all walks of life, bringing their own life experiences. And, and they've certainly responded very well to the call of children and young people over the, the very long COVID period um, when they've needed our support more than ever. So I think it's important to say that all our Childline volunteers are recruited and trained in a professional man manner. They complete um, an initial eight week training program and then they receive ongoing supervision as well as regular booster training sessions to ensure they're able to support any child who contacts the service. I think it's imperative that each volunteer's own welfare is looked after and minded too. So we ensure that this support is provided for them. So I think with all that approach would ensures that, you know, the volunteers use their skills effectively. They adhere to necessary laws and policies to ensure that children are safe and protected. And, you know, given that we receive over 800 contacts via our phone, web chat and text service every single day, 24 hours a day, including Christmas day. I mean, it does give us a unique perspective into what's going on for children in Ireland in, in real time every day. Mm. Very much so. And, uh, you know, the, the numbers are, are, are quite phenomenal. Uh, Onyo, you likewise, uh, you know, you've got a listening ear as such uh, to parents uh, and caregivers' concerns. What are you picking up? You know, what have been the most common concerns uh, reported uh, to the National Parents uh, 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 Council Primary uh, over the last year? Well, I think 2020 actually was a very different year in terms of our helpline and the kind of things that parents are ring, ringing us. I mean, what, what COVID has done is it, it's meant that families and children have had to engage with online technology like, like never before. And whereas parents might have tried to navigate that at maybe later ages for children because of um, online school and, and, and I suppose online family activities, we, we're all used to the Zoom quiz now and everything else. 
but it's meant that younger children have engaged with technology earlier and, and, and as parents know once that engagement starts it can be very hard to hold it back so I think that how parents are parenting their children around their online use has really been, what, been one of the biggest issues that, that we've been we, we've been talking to parents about this year or last year now sorry yeah, yeah. And uh, John, has has COVID, has the pandemic uh, impacted on how children are engaging with uh, uh, with uh, Childline? Uh, you know, what uh, what have you been picking up, uh, and you know, what what are children uh, discussing, uh, uh, you know, through the uh, the Childline channels? Yeah, like like um, Anya, we've seen some some different patterns emerging out of twenty twenty. But I mean, Childline's always busy for a start, but you know, contacts to our phone and digital services surged as soon as the schools first closed in March 2020. I think it was March 27th when we went into full lockdown. It was a Friday evening. And thankfully that evening we were deemed an essential service. So we were able to stay open 24 seven. And we immediately saw a 25% increase in engagements from children um, as soon as we went into lockdown. So, but more and more children and young people, they've been they've been turning to our online services in recent months and throughout 2020. So that's the difference we saw, Brian. And, you know, they, we, they may feel as though um, they do not wish to have their conversation overheard at home. So this is where our web chat was and remains a very important uh, access route for them. So we launched this state-of-the-art web chat service uh, with the funding from the Vodafone Foundation. And Thanks to that technology, we were able to switch over 24-7 on the, for that, as well as telephone, which was really important. Uh, we also um, experimented and switched to video therapy, which was really interesting. And, and that's been very well received by children um, and ensured we could provide continuous support to the most vulnerable children that we couldn't visit uh, in person for obvious reasons. Um, in terms of what they're, they're, they've been calling us about and discussing, well, you know, we quickly discovered that the challenges facing children and young people do not stop in a pandemic. Um, if anything, they were often experienced um, all the more acutely. And, you know, they've been telling us how they're experiencing isolation, particularly now as we go through this prolonged period of, of, of lockdown, bullying, mental health difficulties, Obviously, family tensions as well with the with the cauldron that's experienced abuse, a, a real increase in suicide ideation and, and, and more. So really, the anxiety levels increased significantly amongst children during COVID. And, um, you know, we, we've also had a significant cohort of Leaving Cert students reaching out to us seeking support during that particularly challenging time for them. Yeah, very good, very good. And Anna, uh, similarly, uh, has uh, COVID has it impacted uh, you know on the operation of the head uh, of the hotline? Uh, and also, have you been noticing uh, any new trends uh, over twenty twenty? So uh, similarly to ISPCC Childline, from the early days of the current pandemic, we've been identified as an essential uh, service, uh, which means that we were able to, uh, we had permission to, to travel to the office. Uh, our work cannot and should not be done from home, irrespective of what the situation is. Um, so that meant that we were able to provide an uninterrupted service and continue to do so. Um, in terms of trends, we will be launching our annual report uh, at the beginning of April, so I'm not going to reveal too much today. However, I would like to mention a significant uh, trend that we recorded in 2020. Um, namely, we've seen a staggering increase of 142% uh, compared to 2019 figures um, on uh, content which appeared to be child self-generated um, images and video. Um, the content predominantly featured uh, girls under the age of 15 years old engaged in explicit uh, sexual acts on webcams. Um, our analysts have also noted signs of coercion and grooming in connection to this type of content. Um, and this is a trend that has been picked up by uh, other hotlines in the InHope network as well. Um, however, having said that, uh, a further detailed analysis would be uh, included in our um, annual uh, reports. 
Very good. Okay, so that is um, uh, coming up uh, uh, in in the months ahead. Uh, just a reminder again: uh, if you want to post a question uh, to any of the uh, the, the panelists uh, today, please do so in uh, the Q and A, uh, and we'll try and come to some questions towards uh, the end. Um, Jane, uh, as we've been hearing, it's been a very very different year. Uh, you know, surely this is uh, this is made for a different, safer internet day, twenty twenty one. Yeah, you've been heavily involved in the preparation. Tell us about uh, how uh, this has made for uh, a safer internet day like no other. Like no other, Brian, definitely. But um, look, safer internet day. We know online safety isn't just one day a year, but what safer internet day does allow us to do. It allows all of us to come together as a safer internet centre on a national level with all our stakeholders across Europe to make a lot of noise about a topic that's really important for young people. Um, so Safer Internet Day is different this year, but it is more important than ever, given the prominent role of technology in our worlds this year. Young people have spent more time online than ever, and we felt it was important to highlight the benefits technology has brought this year because there's been it's, it's kind of been a lifeline, um, but we need to recognise the challenges. And while schools are closed, um, we were we were actually a little concerned that schools might be able to participate as, as much as previous years, but this hasn't been an obstacle. Um, schools have been so active this year. We must commend our educators, teachers, and most importantly, our young people for their active engagement in Safer Internet Day. Today, teachers and young people are hosting virtual events across Ireland to raise awareness about online safety topics that are important to them. And we've developed lots of resources, lessons and activities to help schools get involved remotely this year and to make getting involved in Safer Internet Day easier than ever. And one of our big initiatives this each year is, is the peer-led training programme, the SID Ambassador Programme which gives students a leading role in Safer Internet Day. And this year, over 160 students, teachers and youth panel members participated in the programme. The focus of the programme this year is on managing online wellbeing, helping young people manage their online wellbeing and build digital resilience. And this is a topic that really struck a chord with our young people, particularly our youth panel, who have been very vocal on it. And over the course of two months, students have engaged in online training and today they are leading their own initiatives in their own school communities. And one of the really interesting themes that we're seeing actually come out of the programme this year is our young people are really keen to connect with parents. They want to give them information on available resources, but also to give them an understanding of their worlds online and why the internet is important to them and how parents can support them online. But that's only kind of a snapshot of what's going on today. I'd encourage anyone to go on social media. If you go on Twitter, look at the hashtag uh, Safer Internet Day, Be Kind Online. You will see all the amazing activities and the amazing ways our young people and teachers are promoting online safety. I have to say it's so inspiring and credit must go to our schools and young people today. Very much so. And a big shout out to all the Safer Internet Day ambassadors who really do make this uh, a unique phenomenon. Uh, and uh, not just in Ireland, uh, but right across the world, uh, Safer Internet Day really has uh, taken off in an extraordinary way. Uh, just to, could you ask you a little bit about uh, this year's theme, um, uh, Be Kind Online. Uh, why is that so important? So each year we pick a theme for Safer Internet Day and like last year we looked at the topic of digital media literacy. This year our call to action is really simple, be kind online. Um, I think it's important to note that for most people being online is a positive and useful experience but it's also important to recognise that our young people can have negative experiences. The be kind online message encourages everyone to be respectful online, to look after our friends, to look out for others and to be a good digital citizen. I think the message has particular relevance today. It's a really positive, empowering one and one that everyone can get behind. We're actually seeing some lovely examples how, of how schools and students are incorporating the theme into their celebrations today. In fact, two of our youth panel members are hosting a virtual Safer Internet Day event with their school. And as part of their event, um, the entire class have recorded thank you messages for all their teachers for helping them learn online under the theme, uh, Be Kind Online. 
I think that is such a great message and what a brilliant example to put out there today and really represents what the campaign is all about. Very good. And uh, now I, I just if uh, Fiona is uh, is there and online, uh, Fiona Jennings uh, from uh, ISBCC uh, Charlevine. Uh, Fiona has been monitoring some of the chat and uh, just uh, picking up on any questions uh, from our participants. Uh, so uh, Fiona, can I can I turn to you if you're there and uh, can I just see if you've got any questions uh, that we should pose to the panelists? Uh, before we go on and look ahead to the future of uh, the Safer Internet Centre in Ireland. Yes, thank you, Brian. So just a couple of questions coming in. So first of all, maybe um, on the topic of child self-generated explicit images and videos, what advice would the panellists give to everyone who's listening in today in respect of what to do and how to prevent um, child sexual exploitation? Very good. Okay, so certainly uh, absolutely relevant uh, in terms of uh, today. Um, uh, John, uh, you know, could 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 you pick that up? Maybe you know, in terms of you know uh, um, how you might advise, or you know, from Childland's uh, perspective, you know, uh, you know, just how to respond to such a situation. You know, Childline, I suppose it's all about talking, uh, but it's all, it's predominantly about listening. And you know, we also work with parents as well, and we would highly encourage the parents to have those conversations with children, you know, from a very, very early stage. Um, you know, the internet is a fantastic tool for education and communication and engaging with, with, with all sorts, but learning and, and teaching your children uh, the do's and don'ts from a very, very early stage in a fun sort of a way and a non-threatening way is, is, is always something that we would recommend from, from the ISPCC's perspective. Very good. And uh, Anna, uh, this is something that I suppose is uh, foremost in the minds of, you know, hotline.ie uh, analysts. Uh, so have you any any guidance or advice uh, that you might uh, yeah. offer from the hotline.ie perspective? Um, I will like to focus on the uh, image based element of it. So if anyone is trying to blackmail you or extort money or more content, you know, um, it's very important to not share more, don't pay anything, uh, block the number or the accounts, preserve the evidence, don't delete anything and always report it. Um, if a person is in immediate danger or if you suspect a child you know is a victim of sexual abuse and exploitation, report it directly to your local guard station. And if there is something that you have seen online, uh, please do report it to hotline.ie. It only takes 60 seconds to make an anonymous report and uh, our analyst will uh, look into it and take action appropriately. Very good. Um, Jane, uh, you know, I think you've already talked about you, uh, 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 Webwise has developed uh, re uh, resources uh, to help young people and teachers uh, uh, tackle this subject. Yeah, absolutely. So um, obviously prevention is better than cure and we have an excellent range of age and stage appropriate education programs for, this, for schools in the area of image sharing. For example, our primary program, myself in the wider world, is an excellent starting point um, for children on the topic of photo sharing. I've mentioned the lockers program, which will be updated to reflect the new legislation and tackle some really pertinent topics for young people, particularly around consent and victim blaming. But we also have the, the Be in Control resource, another really important program. This addresses the criminal aspects of image sharing, uh, similar to what Anna was speaking to. So online grooming and ex sexual exploit, extortion or webcam blackmail. Um, the program is linked to the Garda Schools program. It promotes help seeking, promotes safe online communication. It provides practical advice on how young people can identify strategies used to target victims. And very important for teens online today, how to practice assertive communication, the skills needed to say no. Um, so all those resources are they're available to access on our website. We also actually have some really helpful materials for parents and having discussions with their teens about consent and respect online and talking points on starting the conversation about image sharing as well on our parent hub, webwise.ie forward slash parents as well. 
Yeah, very good. Uh, and Anya, uh, likewise, uh, this must be a very worrying and challenging uh, type of uh, issue for parents to deal with, uh, uh, should it arise. Yeah, well, I, I think it's interesting that a number of speakers, in, including Minister McEntee, have said that children behave differently online to how they be behave in the kind of the face to face world as such. And, and I think parents need to ask their question, do they parent their children differently around their real world versus their online world? And I think quite often when we talk to parents in terms of parenting, they consider all the risks their children are going to be faced with in the online world. And maybe we need to pay a little bit of attention around um, children's behavior, that, that children's behavior online and parenting children. Because I think, you know, that, that discrepancy between why does the child act so differently? Why is their behavior so different online? Parents need to be tackling that from a very young age and go giving good positive parenting um, messages about how you behave online from a very young age where children are engaging with, with the internet. And at that stage, when it's very early on, children should be engaging with, with online lives with their parents beside them. So I think it's about modelling and showing and, and, and parenting their children around their own behaviour and not just worrying about the risks. And just in, in, in line with that, if parents don't have time to attend our events this week, um, there, we do have an online support that parents can do in their own time that, that's on our website as well around the, these kind of parenting issues around safety online that, that goes into some of these, these issues in a bit more depth. OK, very good. Uh, so building on from this year's uh, Safer Internet uh, Day campaign and uh, the theme of Be Kind Online, uh, you know, perhaps John could ask you, uh, you know, give us a glimpse into what's in store for the Safer Internet Centre for 2021. Well, I think I, I hope from today that people will see the value of a multidisciplinary approach to affecting real change for children. I think what's particularly valuable about the Safer Internet Centre is the complementary functions that each member brings and and learning from other countries too is really important so this year we will be working collaboratively to develop a meaningful strategy for the irish safer internet center in 2021 and that'll help realize our goals and and mission so that that's important towards the end of this year quarter three we will be releasing an impact report on the work of the Irish Safer Internet Centre. And we're also working on a national awareness campaign for the centre, which we hope to uh, be able to share with everybody towards the end of this year. Very good, very good. Uh, Anya, anything specific coming up uh, for the National Parents Council primary this year? You're on mute, I think. Yeah, John did mention his state-of-the-art web chat service, so I don't know whether ours is state-of-the-art or not, but I'm going to say that we're launching a state-of-the-art web chat service in the next couple of weeks, um, where, uh, you know, parents who, who may want to communicate with us differently, they don't want to pick up the phone or email, they'll be able to go onto our website and uh, chat with us through the web chat service. Very good. Uh, Anna, uh, for Hotline. Well, the first, uh, the upcoming um, event uh, is the launch of the hotline.ie annual report, which should be at the beginning of April. And then we're also uh, working on uh, redeveloping the hotline.ie website, which uh, we're hoping to launch by the end of this year. So these Excellent. would be like two quite complex undertakings. Very good. And uh, Jane, uh, uh, WebWise uh, plans for 2021? Yeah, so the, the work continues. Um, our next initiative will be will be launching a new online CFG programme later this year. This programme has been designed for teachers of first and second class, and it'll introduce pupils to the first step of accessing and using the internet and digital technologies in a safe and responsible manner. So that will be available later this year for all schools. Very good. We're, we're coming up towards the end, uh, but maybe just a final question uh, to each of you. Uh, and in line with uh, uh, our theme, Be Kind Online uh, for Safer Internet Day uh, 2021. Uh, so maybe just uh, you know, from your perspective, you know, how can members of the public, how can they do their part and help build a safer online environment? John, could I ask you? Sure. I think a very good first step would be to attend the... Um the live Be Kind Online webinar series. Um, the first uh, webinar is tonight, uh, entitled Empowering Healthy Online Behaviour in Teenagers. Uh, that's on this evening at 7.30. And details of that can be found on WebWise's um, internet site, webwise.ie forward slash safety internet day. I believe already over 760 people have 
have registered for that. So that will prove very popular, I think. Great. Um, uh, Anya, uh, uh, any words uh, uh, in terms of uh, how the public and uh, particular uh, uh, parents uh, can do their part uh, to be kind online? Yeah, I, th I think one of the most important things is, is to speak up. If you see somebody not being kind, it's, it's to call it out and um, also model being kind. I think particularly for children, they need to see their parents being kind online because that's one of their, their key, uh, I suppose, way that they learn their own um, skills is that they, they, they follow what they see their parents do. So I think it's modelling and also calling it out when you see somebody not being kind. But, uh, Anna, a uh, final word from you? So I don't think I can overstate this one. Uh, if you suspect to have stumbled across sexual images of or videos of under 18s online, report it to hotline.ie. Uh, even if you're in doubt about someone's age, it takes approximately 60 seconds to make an anonymous report. And just because you uh, click away, it doesn't mean it's gone. So um, it's very important to report it to us so that action can be taken. Um, and I think I should also mention that we're uh, taking, uh, we're handling reports of child grooming as well, racism and xenophobia and financial scams. Excellent, thanks a lot. And Jane, I will give you the final word uh, for your message about how the public can be, uh, uh, contribute to the Safer Internet Day effort. Um, well, I suppose it's kind of a relevant final point. I think it's really important to recognise the internet is very much a part of our young people's worlds, but it's vital that they're supported with the skills to safely navigate the online world. Um, and a great starting point is to take a look at some of the amazing resources and supports available from all the partners in the Irish Safer Internet Centre. For There's resources available for children, young people, educators and parents and all all that information can be found on, on the partner websites. That's terrific. Thank you one and all. Uh, and uh, thank you everybody for joining in uh, this afternoon. I hope you found it informative and useful. And as John has said, uh, the uh, discussion continues and the webinars uh, which are launched today, uh, Be Kind Online, you find the registration details on webwise.ie uh, and uh, uh, please do register uh, and join. It will be an excellent series. So at this point, I'll hand back to Niall. And again, thanks very much indeed to the, all panelists. Sir, I am here, but I think my video has been disabled. It, it has, Niall. <laughs> <laughs> the, one, the last technical hitch. Uh, but no, uh, no hand, it, hand it back to you for the, for the wrap up anyway. Yeah, there we are. Uh, listen, thanks everybody um, for being involved today. I think it's been a, a really good discussion and some really uh, interesting points raised. So um, I do think if, if we're all done, I'll just... Uh, say thanks very much and we will um best of luck with the with 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 the webinar series uh during the week and uh, we'll we'll talk to you all again thanks very much thank you now that's great thank you